some naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Here we go. Hi, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Iggy Garcia Live episode, I believe it's 172 or 173. I'm sorry, 173. My apologies. Uh, so this show is about friendships, relationships, and grief. It kind of goes in hand with everything that's been going on in the world. So um, if you've not been on this show before, we just kind of chit chat. We talk a little bit for about an hour. We just, we hang here a little bit. We, we get a little bit of sage. We burn some ceremonial sage. Just kind of get the room ready. Get ourselves ready. Get those intentions. Very good. All right, so I just let that burn over there in the distance. Oops. And then, uh, like we always do, we uh, we light a candle, and the candle is representing uh, our ancestors. For those of you who are familiar with the show, we light a ceremonial candle, giving thanks to our ancestors, giving thanks for all that they've done for us, uh, the trailblaze, the path for us, and the preparation for us in life. We're here because of our ancestors. We're here because of the decisions and some of the decisions they did make. So. You know, life is a fine line. So fine lines, giving thanks, and we'll let that burn throughout the show. And I'll have my phone here so I can look at your comments if you have any. Open up the page here, get myself prepared. And we'll begin the show. So we're just kind of perusing along here. I want to say hi to everybody. Hi, Janet. Hi, Janine. Hi, Lawrence. How are you guys? Um, it's good to see you guys here on the show. Good to see you being with me. So I, I, I want to take a moment just to kind of <clears throat> send love and energy where it needs to go today. I really think that right now, and I'm not saying that in any other time in, in history these things didn't happen, but there's a lot happening in the world right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of um, inconsistency. There's a lot of natural uh, disasters that are happening that affect the human race, us us as humans, directly. There's nothing that doesn't happen on this planet that doesn't affect us. Excuse me. So there's there's just so much going on. So let's take a moment of silence. A moment of prayer, a moment of reflection, to give thanks to our, to all the people, and to all the people who love us and care about us, and to give thanks to those people who came into our lives, who challenged us, those people who, you know, who we had to see for ourselves who we were in the scope of the big, the big picture of things, and uh, but really just giving prayers to those people who really need help right now. There's a lot of people who need a lot of help in the world. There's a lot of people suffering right now. There's a lot of people going through a lot of stuff. Uh, in Pakistan, for example, they have this huge flood that's going on. And there's just a lot happening. And, you know, in Ukraine, of course, they're going through their crisis. And different Middle Eastern countries. Uh, some things in Europe. Even here in our country, you know. Just keep remembering, like, Michigan. You know, Flint, Michigan with the lead poisoning and the water and stuff like that. And just... All the things that sometimes don't make the headlines, don't make the news, giving energy and hope and love to all that. You know, we pray to a higher source and we're hoping that this higher source, you know, works through us and gives us the, the ideas and the ideas and the heart and the feelings to move through that. But, you know, being connected with, with great spirit and some of you call it God, great spirit, um, just being thankful that we have a place to put our prayers and our intentions in the universe in the galaxies in the seen and the unseen there is a creator you know uh, 
according to my tradition, my religion, and my beliefs, and there is something that created everything. And there are some of you who don't believe that, but that's okay. And that's, that's not why we're here. We're here because we want to recognize, we want to send love, energy, because, you know, we're energy, we're energetic beings. So wherever our intentions and wherever our heart goes, we will do that. We will manifest, we will create. That's something we do. We're very good creators and we're very good, you know, builders and very good character of destruction too. We can be very destructive as humans. And that's one of those things that, you know, I just want to bring to our attention. And, you know, sometimes we have to have patience with one another. And patience is a, is a virtue, like they say, right? But what I wanted to talk about today was friendships relationships and grief <clears throat> because you know friendships are one of those things uh that either they develop or they don't and you know being in a relationship and a friendship is two different things a relationship with somebody is completely different than just having a friendship uh there are people who are just acquaintances in our lives so here's the thing i i i met a guy his name is mike his mike has a very unique outlook on life and Mike, my buddy, who's my friend now, but I was not, I was not always his friend. I was actually probably nobody in the scheme of the big picture in his mind. But, you know, in his mind, I was an acquaintance. I was somebody who he never, never didn't really know. But he took the opportunity to meet me and took the opportunity to become my friend over time. But it took time. It was on his terms. And I, it was, of course, on my terms, too. You know, I also have the choice to decide if he's going to be my friend or not. It's, doesn't, it goes both ways. We come to a common agreement. But, you know, he always told me, you know, not everybody's your friend. Not everybody's there to, you know, in your life as a friend. Some people are just there for a moment. There's some people there for for an hour, for a year. And some people are just acquaintance. Some people don't ever come to that place or invest in that air injury in that place to invite you to be part of something. Now, for me, friendships are very valuable, very important. And I... I and I'm very, you know, open person. I like to share and I like to invite and I like to invite people to a space to learn, to be part of uh, the things that go in my life because that's just my character. That's just how I work. That's how I function because I know growing up in a bar, growing up in a restaurant, you know, everybody walked the door. There was something going on in their life. There was something that was happening to them. There was something that they were experiencing. And, you know, a lot of people, my dad used to tell me, people come to eat for all kinds of reasons. People come to drink for all kinds of reasons. Not everybody who sits at a bar is a drunk. Not everybody who just comes into the restaurant, you know, is a wealthy person or, or a poor person. Everybody comes for their reasons. The psychology behind the restaurant touring is pretty interesting. And my dad taught me a lot about that. He taught me how to read the room. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people don't do well. A lot of people don't read the room when to talk when not to talk when to shut up and not shut up and i'm not trying to be vulgar here i'm not telling you to, you to shut up but you know people come to a restaurant because they're going through stuff they want to have a good time they want to enjoy they want to celebrate or they're grieving a loss or something's happened uh they're trying to make a decision or they don't want to cook they just don't want to be part of that and invest in that energy but everybody has a story when they walk into your restaurant so everybody has some kind of gift to share with you when they walk through those doors. And I found that very fascinating, very interesting as a young person over the years, all the things that I learned growing up in the restaurant business, growing up in the bar business. You know, for 40 years, my parents owned Garcia's on High Street. Most of you know that. And I owned it for several years. <clears throat> and the cool thing about it was, is was, every day was different. Every day was, you know, every day was a special moment. Every day was, put that over there real quick. Every day was something, you just didn't know what was going to happen. Every day was just something that was just going to be something new. And in the process of being in the restaurant business, you end up creating friendships. You end up creating relationships with people. And you also watch these people transition. You watch some of these people die. You watch some of these people move out. You watch some of these people self-destruct and you watch some of these people create some beautiful amazing things there's a lot of you that i know here who knew me as a child but i didn't know that didn't know you and a lot of you used to come to garcia's when i was a kid and some of you are my friends today and it's really cool to to meet you from time to time and hear the stories about how we were the kids working in the restaurant working 
you know, at the tables, waiting on the tables, bussing them and cleaning them, whatever we had to do, we were doing it. And, you know, that was one of the best schools I ever had growing up in the restaurant business. It was probably one of the most, the best education I ever had, better than college. Better than college because in college, at least, <clears throat> you know, it was out, you're drinking, blah, blah, blah. You're studying, you're going. But you got to learn how to deal with people. You got to learn how to, you know, mingle. You got to learn how to listen. You got to learn how to be a, be part and be part of somebody else's life. To be part of someone else's life and engage in that life temporarily for the moment. So... <clears throat> My dad was, you know, the front of the house. My mom was the back of the house. And everybody had their job. Everybody had their their things and the things that they did. And and I found it really fascinating growing up because, you know, I was 12 when the Garcia's opened. I was 12 years old. 12-year-old kid just trying to um, figure it out. And, you know, it wasn't one of those things that I really wanted to do. But it wasn't really my choice. It was kind of one of those things that, you know, your parents decide for you. Hey, we're going to open up a restaurant. But it was kind of a little bit of a democracy at how Garcia's became Garcia's. Garcia's became Garcia's when my dad sat all the kids on the on the couch. And he asked us all, hey, we have some options of some things that we want to do, you know. And I thought it was kind of fascinating. Uh, my dad gave us the opportunity to decide how Garcia's or how the ice cream business, depending what we wanted to do. He gave us business. My mom was a, a cosmetologist and she was going to, she was going to be uh, studying how to cut hair and do hair. And, you know, it was one of those businesses we were going to be, we're, you know, Garcia's may have been a hair, hair salon. Garcia's may have been a fleet of ice cream, ice cream trucks. That was my, that was my goal. That was my dream. <laughs> Cause it was like, you work from a certain period of time to a certain period of time. Then you have the rest of the year off, you know, selling ice cream. But in the restaurant business it was brutal. Those of you who worked in restaurants, you can know how brutal the restaurant business can be. But throughout all those years in the restaurant, <clears throat> you you make friendships with people. You make you get into relationships with people and you become family with these people. I remember all the beautiful people that we met, all the beautiful people that you know we served for 40 years and all the things we did. And you know. It was really fascinating because today I was reflecting my nephew, Sean. Uh, he sent me a picture of my sister's uh, medicine woman card, her Native American, her her card from the Native American church. And, um, and he just brought tears to my eyes. My sister passed away December 1st. Uh, she suffered from a lot of stuff. And she took her own life. And, you know, I'm not going to beat around the bush because... This, that's what happened. She decided that life was too hard in that moment. And what she was going through and what she was thinking about. I can only imagine what was happening to her heart and her feeling, her emotions about everything. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what goes on in the life of another human being. I don't. They don't. You don't. We don't. We may think we do. We may think is different than we know. Nobody does. And I can I can sit here and debate you on that all night long. And I can sit here and debate with you all night long about that topic. Because nobody knows what I go through, what I encounter, what I learn, what I engage with, and what I do in my life as much as I know what you do. Now... The only thing that happens is how you affect my life, how you influence my life, how you project onto my life. Well, that's different. Those are the things where we make choices to decide what's good for us and what's not good for us in our lives. Who's not fit to be in our lives in this present moment or ever? You know, sometimes relationships start, you know, friendships and relationships start off in, off with a big bang. Everything's great. Everybody's happy. Everybody's like, yeah, we're all friends. Blah. And then all of a sudden, one event destroys it. And I've seen this throughout my life. This isn't anything new. This isn't anything. This will happen until the day I die. There will be people who will agree and disagree with me. There will be people who will be triggered by the things that come out of my mouth. I will be triggered by the things that come out of other people's mouth. Why? 
because I'm a sensitive human being. Because, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody, every human being on this planet is empathic. Okay? Everybody has emotions and feelings. Some are more than others. But most of all the humans that I've run into, they all have some kind of feeling and emotions. And a lot of them cry. A lot of them get angry. A lot of them get frustrated. And a lot of them become indifferent. A lot of them become aloof. Some become reserved, closed off, open, happy, joy, blah, blah, blah. Fill in the blank. There's not one person on this planet that I have met as of yet who's not that way. Why? Because I'm open. Like energies attract. You will attract like energies. And the people who you resonate with. There are people you're going to resonate with. There's people going to be in your life that get you. There are people in your life who understand you without even really knowing you. But they get the gist of you. But you know, our traumas and our, and our emotions and our feelings are the things that sometimes get in the way. Sometimes it's the thing that, that can destroy a relationship. They can destroy, you know, friendships, indifferences. You know, I learned a long time ago is to listen, number one. Number two, I learned is to apologize. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes I'm definitely 100% wrong. And to say that I'm not, and to try to prove and defend that I'm, that I'm not wrong. You know, if you want to prove that you're wrong, or you want to prove that you're right... It's not a hard thing to do, but I watch people all the time and I watch them try to prove and defend their stances on things. And, you know, they have the opportunity, they have choices to correct things, but they won't. They won't do it. I, I used to be like this. I wouldn't do it. I would not. I would, no, I don't want to be wrong. No, no. And that could be from my Latino heritage. Who knows? That could be just me being stupid, stubborn. But I learned really fast, you know, take accountability for what you did. Because obviously something triggered a relationship, something triggered a friendship. Something put something in this, in, into play. Now, there'll be times where you, you feel like you're not in the wrong. You're not in the wrong. And that's okay. And there's times where you feel like you're in the right. And that's okay too. But how valuable is what you got to ask yourself. How important is the friendship you're trying to create how important is the relationship you're trying to foster how Im is it more important for you to be right is it more important for you to be wrong what is it so you destroy your friendship because you didn't like what you heard and this is what's usually what happens to a lot of people they didn't really like what they heard coming out of the mouth of the other person because that's how they perceived them and that's how they engaged with them and that's kind of how it felt even though it wasn't that way and then we do what we do best we destroy and we're destructive and we would rather destroy something than than to be wrong we want to be right you know we all you got to do is turn on your tv and watch the news for those of you who watch the news and that plays out every single night on the news Every single night. Every day. Every single moment. You know? Russia invades Ukraine. The Jewish people don't like Palestinians. Uh, this group, this gang group killed this gang group. This guy killed this guy. He didn't like because he looked at him wrong. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just the kind of stuff that we, we run into. This is why the world screwed up because we won't take accountability for our actions. We won't take accountability for our wrongs. You know, if there's two people and there's a situation there, you're both in the in the situation. You're both in in there and you both need to figure it out. If there's a problem and you're there, you're part of the problem. That's what I've been taught. That's what I've been shown. And usually it's pretty right. Now, if you don't want to be part of the problem, then you have to figure out ways to create solutions. For every problem, there's 10 solutions. But that's too much work. I would rather be angry. I would rather be mad. <clears throat> I would rather be frustrated. I would rather sit there and go, I'm not bending the hand. I'm not bending the knee. You know? Neither. I would never bend the knee. 
You know? It's in our program. It's in the things we watch. It's in the situations, in the things we read. It's in the things, and historically, it's in the genes. It's in our blood. It's in in the things that run through our blood or through our, through our DNA. If you don't think that you're not affected by your past and by things that came before you, I've got news for you. Everything that you feel is real. All that energy you feel inside, and sometimes that anger, that rage you feel, it just doesn't come out of, it just doesn't appear nowhere. It's genetics. It's spiritual. It's heredity. It's genes. It's all the things that, you know, run through our blood. You know, you are the sum of all the people that came before you. You are the equal, you're the equation, you're what you're you're what's comes. Here's what's here in the present moment. Your ancestor was the Viking. Your ancestor was the ship sailor. Your ancestor was the merchant. Your ancestor was the slave. Your ancestor was this or that. And today you're here. And today, now you're here in this present moment. You're here. You are in the present moment of the existence of 2022. This is where you're at. All of us. There's nobody here. There's nothing but 2022 right now. 9-7-22. Today. Even though everything has happened and everything that will potentially happen doesn't play out because you have every opportunity right now to make the decisions to make things and correct things if you choose to. But a lot of us don't have the tools. A lot of us don't have that energy. A lot of us don't have the knowledge to do that because you know what? <clears throat> some of it just sounds like crap all to some of us. You know, some of us think, you know, we, we listen. You listen to a guy like me and you're like, what's he talking about? You know, what's he talking? What do you mean? I got the... You have the energy inside of you that flows from your ancestors. It flows through you. You have also the potential to fix and, and cleanse and, and correct a lot of things. Rewrite stories that have been written. You know, I heard the other day someone said, well, you can't really change history because it already happened. Granted, I'll give you that. But you can change the way it was truly written. Because the version of the story that we're learning, the versions of the stories of these relationships and friendships that were made, were actually written by certain people. Certain people made, and certain people had the right to present how the story looked like, or how the story truly was not. Now, you can walk through life today. <clears throat> as you walk through life today, today as you're walking through life, all of us are experiencing life completely different. All of us are experiencing every single thing differently. And who gets to decide what is, which is right and which is wrong? See, that's what's bothersome. Who gets to say, hey, it was like this, you know? This is what happened. This is exactly how it happened. This is exactly how it happened. No, these guys did this, and this is how we see it. Because people in power and people who dictate, people who are in charge of the historical documents are the ones who get to decide. It's his story. It's he gets to write or she gets to write the story according to how they perceived it. But, you know, you have people from another angle watching the same story going, that's not how it happened. That's not what played out. That's not how I saw it. You know? And this is the problem with the world, I believe, truthfully, is that we all look at stuff and we interpret it through the filter systems and our rose-colored lenses that we wear, our glasses, and then we think that's canon. We think that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's not. Not even for me. All of you will watch this show and have your own opinions about this show. Every single person who watches this will say, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, he's just talking out his butt, you know? No, because here's the thing. Friendships are the same way. Friendships are valuable. Why do we get into friendships? Why do we find friends? Why do we make friends? Why do we find a certain person in our lives and then we connect with them and want to get closer every day with them and be, you know, engage with them and learn from them, share with them. And then to the point where you get in a relationship because you're in a relationship in a partnership with people. You're in a relationship partnership with people. And then you know what? Here's what happens. The, the personality traits of people 
start to come up. You know, when you start to get comfortable in relationships, you start to get comfortable. You start to get like, ah, oh, you can say whatever you want. And then you say stuff. And then you say stuff too much. You say too much. And then you say the wrong thing. <clears throat> and then somebody gets offended. And someone gets pissed off. And someone gets angry. And then here's what happens a lot of times. The one person thinks, well, well, but they should understand this is how I am. I'm this way. Don't they know me? You're really not my friend. You don't know me. I thought you knew me. I thought you really knew who I was. Ah. Uh, no, man. Every day you're a different human being. Every day you're different. Every day you have to come to the table presenting yourself with class and honor and dignity. You know, you can't just come and assume. I have a lot of friends. I just don't assume that they know that this is how I am. Every day I want to be better. Every day we strive to be better. You know, when your friends tell you, oh yeah, well, you know, that's that's just Iggy. That's just how he is. Or that's just Iggy. He's always late. Or he's, or that's just Iggy. That's his job, you know. That's not Iggy. That's not who I am. And you know, and th sometimes that will trigger me as well. Thinking, wow. This is how they see me. This is how I'm seen. This is, wow, this is how I see somebody else. You know, I'm not what I do. I am who, how I present and how I live. The things I do doesn't make me Iggy. Iggy is the person who drives the mechanism of the drum, the mechanism of shamanism and his belief system, the way he presents it. You know... I never assume that anybody knows me. Every day I have to present, represent myself. And that's okay. I have no problem with that. Because I never want to have anybody pigeonhole me or put me in a box thinking they know me. Because I'm not. that's not me. The vast majority of people I know and you know, you don't really know them. You just know how you experience them. How you experience them every day. How every day you are with them. And every day you are part of their lives. That's what we are experiencing. But you don't know. I don't know my wife. I don't know anybody. I don't know, you know, this person or that person. I just know how I experience them in that present moment in time. I have a lot of friends and I have a lot of acquaintances. And I know a lot more people know me than I know them. And, you know, a lot of people come up to me like, hey, Iggy, I saw you online and Iggy your drumming is fun blah blah and, you know I don't know everybody but I have respect I said thank you and appreciate it you know but whatever they experience in that moment is what they experience it's not what it's not who I necessarily am it's just how they experienced the moment with me or what they felt in that moment and you're all the same way don't assume Never, never assume that the people around you know you. Don't take that for granted. Don't, don't wash that off. That's like, that's like wishy-washy stuff because your friends only experience you. Because if you're in a foul mood and you've never been in a foul mood and they see you in a foul mood, they're like, oh, what the heck's wrong with him? I've never seen him like that. Blah, blah, blah. That's right. You've never seen me like that. You've never seen me upset. You've never seen me cry. You've never seen me be in this mode because I've always presented another mask to you because I don't need to present the other mask because that mask doesn't necessarily serve in that moment but we all wear masks right every single one of us we don't always run around jolly happy hey what's up <laughs> you know you know there's moments where we're really we're present in the moment and we're doing what we do and it's not always the way we always present ourselves people will always interpret how they experience us you know, you ex you experience me how you need you, you need to experience me. I experience you how I perceive you. And sometimes I may not be right. You know, I may not be right. But I know in friendships, we trust that the person that is in front of us is who they say they are. That is something that I truly, personally, always really want to know. This person says they're like this and this is who they are. And then I want to present that. Because to me, that's important. <coughs> Excuse me. A little water here. You know, there's... 
I hate to say it, but there's a lot of strange cats out there. Not everybody has the compassion gene. Not everybody has the empathy gene. There's some people who just, they do what they do. And there's a lot of people who are hurt. And there's a lot of people who are frustrated. There's a lot of people who are afraid to get into friendships in relationships with people. That they will destroy a relationship or sabotage it because it's too good. Or because it's not right. Or because, you know, I don't want them to get too close because the last time I let someone close. But you got to remember, the last time you let someone close, that was a whole different person. That was a whole different human being. That was a whole different player. That was somebody who completely different than the other person. If we start to judge people from the last person we judge, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, there are some behaviors and there's some things and there's some signs. But if you're aware of that, then you don't go into this space. But every human being is completely different. Every human being brings something to the table. Not everybody we meet is going to be our friend. But, you know, the, the, the travesty is the people that we lose in our life, the people who are in our lives. Sometimes they're just there for a moment in time. And we should appreciate to the best of our ability the things they taught us. Because guaranteed they're teaching us a lesson about us and how we perceive and how we look at other human beings and what we ex our expectations of what friendships and relationships are. Who's harder? The person who you're judging or the per the judgment you're placing upon the person. It's usually the judgments that you're placing upon the person and what you expect them, how they should be for you. And you know, they're doing it too. <clears throat> but the thing is, the person who's aware and cognitively has the knowledge to know that you can't do that, that you have to just accept that people are not perfect, that people are not going to do the right thing all the time, that people are going to screw up because you know what? You're going to screw up. I'm going to screw up. Damn, I'm ready. To, I'm going to screw up tomorrow probably. Every day we're going to screw up. But then everything. You know what? I do a hundred good things too. You know, when we take accountability for how we create friendship with ourself, relationship with ourself, then we've gone half the battle. But you know what hurts is when our friendships and, our, and the people that we love decide that they no longer want to be part of us be partner of our lives and we play the scenario in our head and it rolls around in there and we're like what did i do wrong what did i do wrong what did i what could i've done different oh and i'm being funny but i'm being serious i'm here to tell you, you didn't do anything wrong what could you possibly have done that somebody wasn't doing to themselves already Listen, when people want to leave me and my friendship, they have reasons. It could be that they don't like my other friends. They could be that they don't like me. They could be they don't like my behavior. It could be a myriad of things. When people leave, you better be clapping. <laughs> yeah, man, out. Because you know what? Even though they're another version of you, that's a version of you that you don't really need to deal with. If someone leaves you and steps out of your life, that's spirit. That's like the angel saying, hey, you know what? We made room so you can go down your way, you know, quit lingering and langing on that person, you know, and then you have to do make the decisions. Do I keep this feelings going? And that's where our grieving comes in. And we grieve. We grieve the loss. You know, breakups and friendships and things. There's true grief in that. If you don't think there's grief in, in losing a lover or losing a spouse or or someone passing away, someone, you know, there is total grief and it compiles. It just compiles on top of each other, losing a friend, losing a spouse, losing someone to death. You know, I lost, you know, so many family members in the, over the course of five years, my father-in-law, my mother, my, my, my father. He wasn't, not, neither of these people were perfect, but they were the, they were the most core value people in my life. They're the ones who taught me a lot about how to be in the way I am today. And I'm grateful for that. Right or wrong, screwed up as they were, you know, it didn't matter. They were still my parents. You know, and I'm thankful because without them, I would never have been born. I would never have the opportunity to be on this show to share with you. 
And then I lost my sister. You know, and then my nephew sends me my sister's Native American church ID, her card. And he says, oh, you can have it if you want it. I said, no, only if you, only if you, only if you want it. He's like, no, it's free. I want to give it to you. And I just, I just busted out crying because, you know, my little sister, you know, Rosa, who I came to this country with, my little sister, I miss her. And this is kind of with friendships and relationships and breaks up. And, you know, we went through our, we went through our little ups and downs through our lives. We made poor decisions about how to be siblings. It wasn't always, you know, it wasn't always bed of roses. It was more like guns and roses. <laughs> guns and roses. But, you know, She was a good human being and she did her best. She did her best. She did her best to be the best version of herself with all the crap in her life. We all have shit going on in our lives. We all of us, every single one of us. There ain't nobody here who's listening to the show who ain't nothing going on. Maybe it just hasn't happened in your moment right now, but you know, there's always something that's gonna something always affects us that changes us. And you know. I'm going to tell you, when she took her life, I was numb. I was numb in, up till today. I was numb about it because I didn't understand. Because the same way, I'm the oldest, but, you know, she's my sister. She's my kid sister. She's the second oldest. I held her in high regard because she's part of me. She's part of my mom and dad. She's part of that energy. She's part of that clan. She's part of that part of us but today was a day that I understand that she had she did what she had to do for her life it wasn't about me it was not about anybody it was just about her you know it was about what she had to go through what she had to experience that's why I say we don't know. We don't know what goes on in people's lives. We assume that we know shit. We think we, we assume that we think we know what's going on in people's lives. And if you're going to cut somebody out of your life, cut them out. Don't mess around. Don't don't piddle around. If the, if the stars align and you guys come back together and you work it out, that's fine. But don't destroy your bliss because somebody else has a different opinion about you and how they see you. But I miss, damn it, I miss my sister. I miss my mom, my dad. You know, my, my father-in-law and all the people. My, my shaman teacher from Peru. My grandma, my grandpa, everybody. And then my, you know, my grandpa who died was 56, you know, when I was a little kid. You know, I never met him except when I was real little. Then when Rosa died, it's just like, it just, it, it put me in a place. It, I, I've been kind of numb about stuff <clears throat> I've worked really hard to find myself and work through these grieving things and these these feelings and emotions that I'm going through right now because it was just hard grief is hard you know my cousins right now or they lost their dad you know it's been over a, it's a month now you know how time flies this is what's crazy it's just how time flies you know the best advice I can say to anybody who's going through grief right now is to remember the good things about them, you know, because there's always good about somebody and the things that they taught us and the things they shared with us. And if you don't have kids, you can share with other people the stories of your ancestors, your fathers. One day we'll all be ancestors. One day, all of us here right now, listen, all of us, we will not be here in the next 50 years, 20 years. A hundred years. None of us. Not, not one single person who's listening to this in the next 50 years to a hundred years will be here. Let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in. So whatever you're creating and whatever you're manifesting right now, whatever you want in your life differently, 
you have to do it for you. You have to do it because if you're waiting for somebody else to do it for you, it ain't going to happen. It's never going to happen. If you want bliss and peace, then you have to find the bliss and peace inside of yourself. That core spirit inside of you. Somebody wronged you, someone hurt you. Okay, fine. You know, that won't, they won't be the first or the last person to do it. Find that bliss and that, find that comfort that you have in you because we all have it. We can play the blame game all our lives about all the things or how we were treated and how we were looked at, how we were side, you know, you know, side looked or whatever or, or treated because we're different. Our differences is what makes us unique. Our differences is what makes us who we are. We are who we are because of how we were made by the creator. The creator made us. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know what the universe is. The universe is part of God, everything. You know, some people like to use the word God and some people like to use the word, use the word, word and some people like to use the word universe. Some people like to say whatever, you know, whatever you use. Don't get caught in semantics with people. Honor that people see the world differently. Honor that not everybody's not everybody's Christian, not everybody's Muslim, not everybody's Hindu, not everybody is, you know, atheist. We are human beings because we are human beings and everybody, everybody, everybody buys into a story. There's not one human being who buys into the story. If you buy into the story of Christianity, you buy into the story. You buy into the story of Muslim, you know, belief system. You buy. You buy into Hinduism. You buy into Hinduism. You buy into Mormonism. You buy into Mormons. You buy into atheism. You buy into a belief system. That's a belief system too. So don't think it's not. Don't get confused. That's a bigger belief system than anything because you have to believe in everything that doesn't. There's nothing going to be around. That's the biggest belief you have to hold. You know, but everybody has the right to believe what they need to believe. Everybody has the right to believe and attach to what they need to attach to. You know, what I pisses me off the most is when people think they know what I'm writing. or When people think they know what I posted. When people think that they know what's rolling around in my head because of their insecurities about themselves. You know, and most of the time, people when people attack you, it's more about the insecurities about how they see themselves or how they perceive the world or how they perceive that they are victims of the world yeah everybody in this world everybody every human being in time over history and time have been slaves to somebody everybody it don't matter you know everybody's been part of a genus a genocide at one time or another you know but we don't see it because you know we're in it we're now and everything in the present everything that's fresh everything that's right now you know I have my ancestors and my people and the people are still grieving the losses of all the indigenous people who were wiped out by the European conquerors. You don't think we don't think about that? We don't stop thinking about that? We think about it because it crosses our mind because you know what? It happened. We were slaves. We were manipulated. We were coerced. We were raped. We were pillaged. We were indoctrinated. And you know, before, you know, in Spain, in Europe, the Moors for 700 years, they had the Europe, they had Europe. And slavery was a common thing. I know it sounds like I'm going off track, but I'm not going off track because it all connects why we feel the way we do and why we go through these feelings that we go through. Because you have lineage of things that have happened to your ancestors. <clears throat> there is things inside of us that we, we have to work on. You know, the Irish have the Irish rage. You ever hear that? Irish rage. The Irish rage. It is true. How do you work on that? You have to work on it. The Native Americans have their rage too. Every, every culture has their rage points. And the things that trigger them even the caucasians do you know those people who think that caucasians weren't slaves one time they were you know there was everybody's been a slave once in their in their lifetime but in our current timelines of a thousand years two thousand years like when you in that in that moment you know all of us lived 80 years 
I'll give you 80. So two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. That's four. Okay. Every every 20 years you're living a different version of yourself. For 20 years you're living this version. For 20 years you're living this version. 20 years you're living this version. If you're lucky to live to 80. And then in this this last 80, this last 20 to 80, you're a whole different human being. You're a whole different, you're a whole different incarnation of yourself. You are completely different. This is what people don't understand. This is why they get frustrated and they get upset because the person across from you, especially if they're your family, they're going through the same thing you're going through. You just don't see it. You only see it because you feel it. Because it's easy to push it onto you because you know what? You can handle it. You know? The firstborn always takes the blunt, the brunt of all the siblings because, you know, it's easy. And the firstborn should always just feel what they need to feel. I'm not saying you need to fight. I don't say you have to be ignore them. But the thing is, we all we need as human beings, we have to understand there are cycles of 80 that happen. There's always cycles of 80. Every time we're going through these cycles of friendships, relationships, grieving, partnerships. So all of us right now are going through different phases in our life. You know, the next in 20 years from now, if I'm fortunate and lucky enough, and if, you know, I'm blessed and I do the right things, even if I do the right things, in 20 years from now, I will be 75. Wow. Wrap that around your mind. <clears throat> That's kind of crazy, trippy stuff right there when you think about it. If I make it to 75, I'll be a little bit older than my dad. You know, all the energy that we spend, all the energy that we just... I want to say, I'm going to say waste sometimes and just non-productive is spent on feeling the emotions of what other people feel about us or how other people project onto us and how angry we get with them. Live your life. Be your best friend to yourself. You are your best version of you every day. Have the relationship with yourself because when you're good with yourself, it invites the right energies to come into your space and you know what we grieve because you know what oh when i was little i was abused that's grief oh when i was a teenager i was abused that's grief we're grieving but those kids those kids frozen in time are looking at you going when are you going to lead us man i know we were abused i get it but are we going to live the abused life can we move because you're you keep writing you keep painting the same story over and over and over actually you change the story now now, all of a sudden, we've added this new dynamic to it because that's what we do. We're creative creatures. The trauma that you created is not even the trauma that you suffered, that I suffered, isn't even the same trauma that we suffered because we've painted such a different picture of that trauma every single day. Woes me, pours me, that we don't even know what truly really happened anymore. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Do you remember what happened last week? Probably not. Most of us don't because it wasn't a traumatic moment because you moved through it. The trauma gets stuck because it's frozen in time like this. Inside there is a little child going, hey, I need an adult to take care of me so, so I can feel safe. So I don't have to feel these feelings anymore. What can we do? Can you take care of me? And this is the kind of work I do. This is the kind of work I do in shamanism to help people process and work through this stuff. You know, shamanism ain't witchcraft. Whoever told you that is bullshit. You know, it's just somebody's opinion and belief and projection onto what they see and because they don't understand it because it's not everybody can do it not everybody wants to do it not everybody's interested in doing it but those who people who are interested in those people who are following the smoke to do it they get it they understand what i'm saying just like you light workers who are out there the light workers are the worst and the most critical group of us all we're the worst we're the worst we're the most sensitive and sometimes the most egocentric of us all because you know what? We think that we have a divine calling from spirit. That that gives us a, gives us a free pass to say whatever the hell we want. No, that's not true. We have a responsibility as divine connection, a divine hollow bone 
to present and to do the right things. And to think that we are above all of our brothers and sisters. No, we're not. We just gifted. And everybody's gifted. Every human being is gifted. But not everybody's willing to use their gifts because they don't know how to or they don't want to. And those of you who use your gifts to help other people, I commend you to, for doing that. Been honor and respect that you have the power to help someone or cripple somebody. Because of your anger and your frustration about your own crap. And it's the responsibility of us healers to make sure that we do the right things all the time. With us first. Healing us. Asking for help. I'm screwed up. I need help. Will you work on me? And pay that person what they're owed for their time. Or a trade or whatever you agree to. You know, you go to a doctor and you spend thousands of dollars. You give a doctor... All your lifetime, you give them thousands of dollars because you trust them and you believe them. But those healers, those people who are in your community, those people who work in your community, those people who are here right now, these people, they invest and they learn and they study. And they're called to do this work. Are Some are good, some are bad, some are indifferent, some get it, some don't. <clears throat> your job is to find the right one that fits you. And then you create friendships and relationships with them. <clears throat> you know, the world's full of magical people. The world's full of magic. When we want to see it, when we want to see the magic and we want to see and not buy into all the crapola that's put, put out there. Listen, there's a war. There's a battle for your spirit, for your soul. And you know, this sounds like, like I'm preaching because I am. There's a battle for the greenbacks in your pocket. There's a battle for you to come to this side of the table. There's a battle for you to avoid that group. There's a battle. And this battle's real. And if you don't see it, it's because you're in it. You're so entrenched in it. As healers, as we work, as we manifest and we create, it is our job to help and guide and show people it's like leading a horse to water. You get them there, you can't expect them to drink it. It's up to the horse. Human beings are the same way. Healers, as you work with people. You want to you wanna see them once? Two or three times maybe? And that's it. You want them to move on. You want them to heal. You should never have people lingering around. Unless you're a massage therapist, you know, or a chiropractor, you know, which is different. But this spiritual energy stuff... Working people, helping them through. Yeah, there's always pieces and parts and components that need to be worked on. And then eventually that person becomes your friend. That person respects you and honors you for what the work you do. But this thing that we, we have people just lingering along. Keeping them going. Help them find their way. So they can find the friendships they need. The relationships they need. You know. So they can grieve the energies that they have are stuffing inside them. You know, that's why I will never give anybody a read. Just out of the freaking blue. Oh, you know what? You want to talk to your dead aunt? She's right next to her. No, because that's disrespectful. That's like a doctor saying, hey, you want me to pull your tooth right now? You know, I'm going to pull your tooth right now. Is that okay? It'll feel better. I can see you got a tooth there. You know? No, you don't do it like that. There's a protocol. There's protocols. But I get it. A lot of newbies get excited because, you know, they're like, hey, I got it. I'm connected. Those who have the gift, those who have powers have to know and respect and honor that. Now, if you're in certain circumstances, you want to you do that. That's different. But I've had people come to me. I'm like, nope, sorry. Some ladies the other day, some lady sent me a message. I have a message from you from the angels. And I'm like, OK, great. Do you want to read it? Nope. No, because you know what? Here's what happens. This is my experience. You may have a different one. You hear something. You listen to something. What happens? It gets embedded in your brain. No matter what you... No matter... Everything that you see is being recorded. Everything that you are experiencing being recorded, seen or unseen. So if someone embeds a thought or plants a seed in your head, the next thing you know, you want more. Next thing you know, you're entrenched into this belief system. 
So you have to be very careful how you present yourself, how you work yourself, how you work with people, how you create friendships and relationships. First of all, as a healer, manifestors, light workers, the awakened, whatever you want to call yourself, you have to make a decision. Is this person going to be your client? Is this person going to be your friend? Is this person going to be in a relationship with you? Is this person going to be in a partnership with you? Because you can't have it all. You can't. You can have friends, yes. But there's a point. There's a fine line that eventually that person no longer becomes your client. They become a friend or they move on. And people can't separate that sometimes. Oh, they're my friend. Not everybody's your friend. Not everybody's, not everybody's there to engage with you. Some people are just there to receive the love that you have to offer. Now, you know, there's been a lot of good things happening to me. I got sick in January. I'm doing much better. But I had to go through that crap. I had to go through that. I had to go through that wave, you know. I had to go through all that stuff, man. I had to feel all that. I didn't like it. I didn't want it. But there's consequences when you, when you do things, you know. Consequence doesn't mean it's a bad thing. See, wordplay too is important too. Consequence doesn't mean bad. There's good consequences. But we use words sometimes and we use them incorrectly. When I got sick, I don't know when I got sick. I just got sick. And everybody's like trying to figure out, trying to do the timetable. I'm like, that's irrelevant. The timetable is irrelevant because you know what? It doesn't help anybody to ponder. Let's get well. Let's get Iggy better. Let's get this person better. And a lot of us lost loved ones. A lot of us lost good friends, good relationships. And we're all, a lot of us are grieving through that process. A lot of us have moved on. And then here comes the next phase. That lingering effects of that. And you know, I went to the doctor about a month ago and I said, hey man, I need, I need you to give me something. I need some antibiotics. And you know, I'm not one for taking antibiotics, but the, the stuff that I was using wasn't just, wasn't giving you that punch. You know, they put me on a Z pack. They put me on steroids. Everything has its purpose to an extent and you know did it work yeah did it help yep yeah. then it gave me an opportunity to continue my healing and what happened my mind opened up my mind felt better i was in a place where i was able to understand and realize i've been doing things screwy here i've been doing things wrong i've been really hanging on to that inhaler taking that allergy pill more than I need. And then I remembered a friend of mine told me about this book, Breath. Okay. The science of the lost art of breathing. You got to read that book. If you don't like to read, I don't find the audio book. That book has changed me. I have not had one episode. I have not had one puff of my inhaler. I have not had one anything since I came off those those antibiotics. And my friend sent me some NAC, which is good for the lungs and stuff. And been taking, you know, the zinc and things like that. But what's really truly helped me is that book. This lost ancestral information that's in this book. That's in this book. And I don't usually promote books. I usually don't talk about it because you know, everybody has their own beliefs. But I'm going to tell you something. I didn't realize that I was breathing wrong. I never thought myself as a mouth breather. But I was a mouth breather. Because I had all the symptoms of snoring. All the symptoms of CPOD and all the symptoms of allergies. All the symptoms of that. And you know what happened? I read this. I'm still reading this book. <clears throat> I was just floored. I've been doing some crazy stuff with these techniques, but man, I feel amazing. 
I've lost weight because I've been breathing properly. Seriously, I kid you not. I'm not lying here. This is a true story. Not a lot of weight, but you know, my weight's like gone down. And I'm going, all because I was breathing wrong. And this isn't like meditation, breathing like through your nose on the mouth. It's different. It's acknowledging breathing through your nose. They talk about the ancestors, how they would breathe through their mouth. They wouldn't. That's why you wouldn't see them smiling in a lot of pictures. Because the nose filters, the mouth does not. There's just so much good stuff in here. James Nestor, breath. I, I'm thankful to my friend Aaron. He told me about this book. Aaron Cruz said, Iggy, you need to read that book. It'll change your life. You know, like anything, people tell you stuff all the time. Pet. Aaron was right. You know, when you figure out that you've been doing things a little bit wrong and you just need a little tweak and you have to move things in a certain direction, you know? It just kind of makes you feel good when you when you know you're in the right going the right direction. My my mind, my clarity, of my mind has been better. Believe it or not, you tape your mouth. It's gonna be a little little thing. You tape your mouth at night. People tell you, so your mouth won't open up. So you forced to breathe through your nose. I was like the first night. It was crazy. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna suffocate. No, but I didn't suffocate because I forced to breathe through my nose. Because with athletes, they trained athletes during some, I forget which Olympics it was, but they trained these athletes to breathe through their nose when they were having through their mouth. You don't get as much oxygen through the mouth as you think you do. And it causes all kinds of problems. And the main reason why these, why this, this, the main reason why we have a lot of breathing issues is because our head got bigger, our brain got bigger. We got smarter, we got dumber. Everything else shrunk, so everything got pushed back, and it started to cut off, and it forced our mouth. Oh, and... but according to this book, your face structure, everything will change. I haven't really looked to see if my face has changed, but my belly's gotten smaller. I'll take that. But we'll talk about this book later in another episode. I just want to give you a little enticement. So I'm going to, re I read the book and then we'll come back and we'll do a little book club. We'll read that book. But anyhow, friendships, relationships, partnerships, grieving, it all goes hand in hand. Now I know not everybody's going to agree with everything I said here and that's okay. I, that's not why I come on this show to be liked. I come on the show to challenge. I come on and I do my show to share what's in my mind that's why i do the little podcast of iggy you know mind of iggy from time to time i don't come on here for likes i don't come on here to gain a thousand followers i come on here to share to those people who are willing to listen and willing to learn and willing to understand what i'm saying and read and understand and pick up the tidbits they need to because those people understand what i'm saying not everybody here is going to be on board with everything I say. And that's okay. And I don't want you to be. Unless you want to be. But I'll tell you one thing. I trust in the higher source. That it sends me the right information. And gives me the right cues and the right things to say. Now there are beautiful people that I'm no longer friends with. They're still beautiful to me. But they had to go a different path, a different road. And do different things. But I also can't allow them to be decisive with me and do things that aren't good for me. So I have to separate myself from them. Don't dislike them. I don't hate them. They just need to be where they need to be. I'm where I need to be. And I will do the work that I need to do and continue doing the work I have to do. But anyhow, that's all I have for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. I hope you got some tidbits out of it. I hope something resonates with you. You know, I'm your naked shaman. So, you know, just let it all drop 
and just let it show and just be open book about things how I am. That's why the show is called The Naked Shaman. But I can't use the word naked in some some of the podcast things, so that's why it's not called The Naked Shaman. It's That's why it's called You Guess Real Live. So. But anyhow, guys, thank you very much, and I really appreciate for those of you who invest your time and energy to listen and to share with me your feelings, your emotions. And a lot of you who are online, I work with you individually. A lot of you are good friends. A lot of you are acquaintances. A lot of you are clients. I'm very grateful for to have you in my life because you're also my teachers as well. Don't think that I don't learn from you because I do. All healing is self-healing. All teaching is goes both ways. You know, I have to have that that policy that you know someone is there to teach you. All of, all of us have something to share, something to give. All of us have with insights. So from With Insights Radio and IggyGarcia.com, I want to say thank you. We'll be at Ash Cave this coming Sunday, September 11th, 2022, Hope from 11 to 4. Hopefully you can make it. It's going to be a good time for those of you at Hocking Hills in Hocking Hills, Ohio, Logan, Ohio. Uh, with that, I want to say Mataku Yasin, Ho'oponopono, much love, Irisikwi, and I will see you guys next time. With that, I want to say a ho. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care. Love you guys. Just just be what you have to be. And remember, remember one thing. It's good to be here. That's right, my friends. It's good to be here.